Hello and welcome to Die About Tech. I'm Justin and today I'm talking all things Omnipod. This is an insulin pump. It is tubeless. It's an all-in-one device. I'm going to be telling you kind of what this is, getting into why rotating your pump is important and the spots I use and that are approved and I'll even be doing a site change for you. Oh, and I've got videos coming out every Friday, so make sure you subscribe to this channel and give this video a like if you enjoy it or learn something new. All right, let's get into this Omnipod site change. Very important, I am not a doctor. None of what I talk about today is medical advice. You should always talk to your doctor before you change up insulin or your pumps or anything. I'm simply talking about my experience and that's it. First things first, what is Omnipod? Well, as you can see, it is just this right here. It is a tubeless pump. You uh, have some adhesive here, so you stick it to your body. And when you put it on, there is like a tiny little tube that gets injected into your skin and that's what provides you insulin. I will be putting insulin in this and showing you kind of how this works in just a bit. Omnipod is approved for those who are two years and older. I made the cut as you can see and I truly love using this. I've never used a tube pump like the T-Slim or Medtronic. I'm a huge fan of the mobility I get from this and how small it is, I truly forget that it's there. Now let's get into kind of where you can wear this. According to Omnipod's website, you can wear it on your abdomen, your back, your sides, your upper buttocks, your legs. I never tried a leg site because I have pretty muscular legs and I'm kind of afraid of the tube hitting a muscle, but it's something I will try. My favorite spots to put in Omnipod are behind my arm, even sometimes the side, ooh, that's the G7, and I reviewed it on this channel. If you haven't seen that, you should go check it out. Uh, so I'll put the Omnipod on either side of my arm. I try to find like a fattier area, that way the tube doesn't hit like a muscle because that's uncomfortable. So below the arm, kind of a little higher, a little lower. Um, sometimes I'll even go a little to the side, but not good if you're like on an airplane or going to a club because that will get kind of hit against. So, Keep in mind placement with like your activities coming up in routine. Besides that, I like my stomach area. So I'll kind of do like down here, here. I'll even go a little higher kind of up here because I have like enough fat there. And you can tell like I have a somewhat hairy body, but somehow by day three of Omnipod, as long as I use a, like I personally use like an alcohol swab around it to kind of wetten it, it comes off very easily and I don't have any irritation or like hair pulled off. That's just me. This could be different for everyone. Also in general, like the adhesive doesn't affect me in any bad way, um, my skin, but I know some people react differently to different adhesives and there are solutions to putting a barrier to adhesives. And if you want, if you want to learn more about that, you should check out my Instagram and TikTok because I talk about it over there. It is so important to be rotating your Omnipod because there is scar tissue that builds up after you place your Omnipod. And if you continually go back to the same place too soon, the scar tissue will build up and the insulin won't go into your system as easily. There will be like a buildup. So you gotta rotate your pumps. You don't wanna return to the same spot within 30 days. So I created a rotation that I follow. I go arm, arm, stomach, like abs, abs in different locations, side, back, and then I do the same on this side. Arm, arm, stomach, abs, twice, side, back. Now, as long as your Omnipod insertion site is three inches away from the last site, then you should be good. That won't be irritating the last spot but that 30 days before returning to a spot is key. If you're an Omnipod user, let me know where you use your pump in the comments. There are some spots that I just have never gotten to and I'm curious to kind of hear what your experience has been because maybe I should try those areas too. All right, it is time. Let's do an Omnipod site change. Before I get into this, if I haven't answered your question by the end of this video, make sure you throw that in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as possible. All right, Omnipod, we got one right here. In this package, we have got the Omnipod pump right there, and there is the adhesive around it, and there's this tab. You don't wanna take off the tab yet, that is for later. So I'm going to place this down. Then next in this package, you've got a needle. There's the 
front part, which has the actual needle. And then this is the, I guess, maybe a syringe. So you just twist that on and then it is ready to go. I'm gonna leave that cap on for just a sec. And then this is recyclable. So I always throw this into the recycling because diabetes can be pretty wasteful because these are really going into the garbage. There's no recycle program, at least in the US. So unfortunately, I threw these in the garbage. I did make an ornament out of one for Christmas though. Got my insulin here. Also, as you can see, I have it in this protective casing. That's like the soft silicone. I found a great deal for these on Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description and it keeps it safe. <laughs> Next up, what's super important are alcohol swabs for a couple reasons. Uh, the first reason, I kind of like tear off that piece then I take out a little bit and I use that on the top of the vial. So then next up, take the syringe and the needle and then you put it into the vial. I mean, most of you probably know how to do this, but if you don't, that's what you do. And then you put the good old insulin in the needle. Now everyone puts a different amount of insulin in their pump. There's a max of 200 and a minimum of 100. So just keep that in mind. If that's too little or too much for you, then maybe an Omnipod's not worth it for you. Next, you just put the insulin into the top through this little hole. There's an arrow for it. And then there's the beep. So you wanna wait for that beep. That means that it um, recognized that the insulin's in there and it also turned on. There's gotta be a mechanism in there that like gets pushed essentially by the insulin and is like, all right, I'm on. Cause you know, these last a pretty good amount of time and um, that's because the battery or rather the pump doesn't turn on until that moment. At least that's what I think. I'm not a doctor or an engineer. Now that that is on, it is going to be recognizable by the system. Now for me, I'm gonna be using my iPhone to connect it because I used what a system called Loop, which is a non-FDA cleared closed loop system. Closed loop systems are when your CGM, continuous glucose monitor, talk to a pump, T-Slims connect IQ, Omnipod 5, those are both closed loop systems. So is Loop. Loop's been around actually longer and uh, it's the way I choose to take control of my blood sugars. If you wanna learn more about Loop, I'll throw a video in the top corner and down in the description. So, gotta replace the pod, so I'm gonna deactivate mine. There we go. So this is what Loop looks like when you, turn, when you set it up. Yep, it's on my iPhone. I love being able to control my blood sugar from my iPhone, my CGM and my pump have all that information, it's pretty cool. There will be a video on that. Anyway, the pump is now ready. I'm going to click pair pod, and then what's gonna happen is it's gonna start clicking. You're not really supposed to move it, but I think it's okay to kind of hold it up like this. I want you to hear it with the microphone. Hear that? What it's doing is it's priming. It's essentially circulating the insulin around the system and getting it prepared to be adhered to the body. The pump is paired and it is ready to be placed on my body. So what I gotta do next is take off this tab um, you, with some force. <laughs> there we go, the tab is off. And there's some insulin that leaked out and that's totally normal, it's okay. So now there are two stickies here. Before I take those off, I'm going to use an alcohol swab to clean off the area of my arm. Let's do it right there. Sometimes I use like birthmarks on my arm to remember exactly where I cleaned because currently I'm not using a mirror really and I forget. So, okay, that's the beauty mark. And <laughs> that's where it's gonna go. Okay, so next I'm gonna take off the stickies and be very careful when you're doing this. I've definitely messed it up before and like crinkled the uh, adhesive and you don't wanna do that. So there's that birthmark. And then I definitely cleaned it over here. So I'm gonna put my pump here, place down the middle, then pat around the adhesive. Try not to have any wrinkles. Sometimes I'll like stretch out my arm a little bit to make sure that doesn't happen. And then I just push down the middle and then I also will push around the sides uh, like a few times, like three times. And then also it's very important to not put it on too quickly after the alcohol. Something I've noticed when doing that is the adhesive won't stick. Like it needs to be dried. So just make sure that is the case. Okay, now the pump is officially on and it is ready to basically use the needle to put the little tiny tube into me. 
Now what's going to happen is once I press this, there are going to be six clicks, I think, or five clicks. Oh no, I forget. We'll count. I'll let you hear the first one. So on that sixth click, I believe, that is when it's going to go in. Personally, I like knowing those numbers because I'll just listen to it and like kind of know it's coming. I think not knowing when it's coming is kind of scary. Uh, so the first time you put this on may be a little scary. It's normal. Okay, I'm going to insert the cannula now. Of course, again, you're not using an iPhone probably. You're probably using the PDM. Here it goes. Six clicks. And sometimes I like to... There it was. So on the sixth click, is that when it goes in? Also, I'm sure you saw, I like to pull up the fat a little bit. That way the tube doesn't hit a, a muscle. Uh, it's okay to just like squeeze a little bit around it. So there you have it. That was an Omnipod sight change. I hope you learned a bunch today about Omnipod and how I like to put it on in ways that you could potentially put it on. If you have any questions about my experience or what yours could be, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to answer those for you. I've got videos coming every Friday, so make sure you subscribe. Click that bell for alerts if you want to get alerted when the videos drop and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I'm Justin and I'll take you later.